the sun is just about set. And Shane, with the Jundas, we completed the most difficult hike that I ever attended. What? We made it today to the summit of Mount St. Helens. Hope you enjoy the video. Good morning, guys. It's uh, about a quarter after five in the morning. We've been up for an hour right now. We are heading up to the trailhead for Mount St. Helens. Got Shane with me. Uh, as you know, last year, Natalie and I tried up in the snow and we were unsuccessful. We're about a month later, so we have some warmer weather. It should be a good hike today. We actually have a family meeting us here from our church, and the goal is to hike up with their family, at least the dad and the son. So it should be fun. Looking forward to this day. The goal is to what, Shane? We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it to the top. Let's do it. Trail maps downloaded, the permit and the ID. We have our micro spikes. We have our shoes. I'm going with the trail runners today instead of the boots. The trail is primarily clean. We were told about three and a half liters of water, Gatorade, food, snacks, first aid, hiking poles. We've got our backpacks, our gloves, our hat, warm clothes, sunscreen, sunglasses, the trash bags for glissading if we can make it down. Camera, phone, 360 cam. We are set to go. Let's do it. We want to be straight up with you. This is a challenging hike that we're doing today. But we wouldn't have you guys do this if we didn't think you were capable of doing it. All right? So all that running you guys do and you're playing basketball together, you're in great shape. There's nothing on this hike that is dangerous. All right? But it's going to take a lot of work. So if you're tired, hey, we're all going to be tired. We'll take some breaks. If your body ever gets hurt or something feels uncomfortable, you got to let us know, though. Okay? Drink your water. We'll have a quick prayer, and then we're going to get started. You guys ready? Yeah. You guys can do it. Our goal is to get to the top. We're just underway right now. This trail is fantastic. It starts off in the woods, as you can see us in right now. Then we're going to get up on Monitor Ridge, do some scrambling over the lava boulders, and then the dreaded lava ash is the final third of the trail. But praise God, uh, the, the, the summer route just opened up about three days ago. <clears throat> That saves us about 1,200 feet or so elevation hiking. So uh, got off a little easy on that one. As you can tell right now, we're just wrapping up the forest part. And that's what I really enjoy about this hike so much is the variety. The forest hike will take you up, I'm estimating now, roughly half the distance. But beyond this point is when we're going to start banging out the elevation. We're making our way up now to the, uh, the boulder field. And also, if you come here, you can make it this far. But beyond this point, you do need a permit. You guys ready? Yeah. Mark? Yeah, let's do it. I think. <laughs> the kids are ready. I'm not sure about the dads, but let's keep going. Everybody's doing great. Yeah. You know, I was reading some reports on this trail, and you read about people getting lost. And you see how easy it is. You come out here, you got to make sure you follow those blue dots, because right now there is no defined trail at all. So you got to stay in line. All right, Shane? Yeah. You're our leader, man. Right. Lead the way, buddy. So tell me, this is uh, this is being monitored right now, right? Yep, it is the most wired volcano in the world after Mount Fuji in Japan. No kidding. So there are seismographs, there are ultra-sensitive GPSs, there's instruments in the fumaroles up in the crater. 
there's uh, some strain, some tension kind of meters that have long steel rods through tunnels. So they're taking every precautionary measure they can. Yeah, and it's all hooked up to antennas and all feeds back to the USGS Obs Volcano Observatory in Vancouver. Wow. And they keep an eye on it. So Is there any activity right now? Is there, it? There's little earthquakes. Okay. All day, you know, every week there's a half a dozen or more earthquakes. And those are caused by either the new magma as it's kind of pushing into the volcano and refilling things slowly. And some of it's caused by you know, water percolating down through hot rocks and hitting okay. places. But, um, Are these glaciers right here? These will all be gone in no time. A, a, another couple of weeks and all be gone. So that's just regular snowfall then? Yep. Wow. So by the end of the summer, there'll be almost no snow on this side of the, on the outside of the mountain at all. And then uh, the snow starts coming down probably a month later, right? <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Sometime in the first snowstorms will be in September. I got snowed on probably three times in June this year. Wow. So it's, it was a long, cold, windy spring. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thanks for your, your comments, your you insights, and your time. We appreciate yeah. that. What's that thing behind you? It's the Galating Hill. Pretty close. Glissading. Yeah. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong as well. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Yeah. You go on a trash bag. I'll take, I'll take that route coming down any day compared to this. <laughs> All right, let's keep going, guys. Doing great in the boulder field. All right, the hard part right now is keeping up with Caleb and Shane. But uh, that ridge right there is sort of near the end of the large rock section. It's around 6,900 feet. This is definitely some challenging hiking here, or I should say rock climbing. Doing really good, guys. You can see the peak right there. We have about 1,400 feet still to go. Whole trail is only 4,500, so you can see that there's only maybe a mile or so left, but that elevation gets pretty intense on the final stretch. Still in the rock, boulder field section. This is nasty. As you guys said, it's more like rock climbing than rock scrambling, huh, Mark? Yeah, a lot steeper than I thought <laughs> that last stretch. And then you can see where we came up. Probably don't get much perspective with the camera, but uh, especially that last like 30 yards or so straight up. So we find ourselves here on an absolutely amazing day. Just perfect weather. Only about 100 people on the trail. That's the number of permits. I think it's 100 or 110 that they issue each day. So uh, you don't run into a lot of people, but as it is with any national park hike, the people you're with are always very friendly, very hospitable and Kind of just helping each other, encouraging each other along the way. We need more of that in our society every day. All right, break's over. You guys ready to keep going? Let's do it. All right, let's go. Okay, you can see the guys heading up the lava rock now. We finished the boulders. That is the rim. You see up on the top, gorgeous view to the right of Mount Adams. And then you got Mount uh, Jefferson, which we can't see anymore. And that's Mount Hood way back there. 
Beautiful day. When I did this hike in 2013, I said it was the hardest one I've ever done until today. Nine years later, it makes a big difference. Wow, I don't want to complain, but I'm telling you, if you want to attempt this, you better be prepared. It is really challenging. You get up in this lava ash, it's like going up a mountain, a steep mountain of sand. Gorgeous, but it's a lot of work. Finish strong. Let's go across the finish line right now. There you go, we have made it. Good job, everybody. Hey gang, so it's really windy up here. There you go, first look at Rainier as well. We have made it to the top of the crater. There's some cornice right here. That is extremely dangerous. You never want to step on that. That whole thing could slide right into the crater. Off the distance, you got Spur Lake as well, just in front of Rainier. What an amazing accomplishment. I already mentioned it. If you come up here, stay away from that cornice. Looks like corn ice along the rim of the crater. One of the volunteers said that uh, people have stepped on the edge and it's been a while, thankfully, but for quite some time, about one person was dying every year. And of all the people that fell through, only one person survived the fall. So it's tempting to want to get all the way out there and look into the crater, but. So the main rule about glissading is the yeah. Is to make sure that it's soft enough that you can dig your heels in easy and stop. Okay. So if it's too hard to dig your heels in, then it's probably too hard to glissade in, especially without an ice axe in your hand. So. Gotcha. Mm. How about a uh, collapsed hiking pole? Would that work that as well? Helps. So you take two of them, make them as short as they can go, hold them together, and, and you can do the same thing. You'll drag them along the side to slow okay. down. And if you get going too fast, you can roll over and stick them in the mountain. Right. So it's a little hard on the trekking poles, but it definitely works. A doozy from the top down about a, a thousand feet from the rim down is a really nice one. It needs to soften up a little bit, but it'll be soft by the time you get there. Glissading, here we go. We got the plastic trash bags. I'm gonna try to take the quick way down to the bottom. Wow, Mark went pretty far. Look how far your dad is. <laughs> A big jump. Can you believe yesterday, Shane? We were standing right there. 
top yesterday. What a different perspective. A lake that's been created by Mount St. Helens. Take the plunge, buddy. Woo, way to go, bud. That's why they call it Cold Water Lake. swimming in this lake though isn't it yeah this is fun i think it's fun you having fun yeah <laughs> all right guys thanks so much for watching this was a major accomplishment we are so pleased with our sons but in reality they probably did better than we did thanks for watching the video all the way to the end if you haven't done so yet hit that red subscribe button and remember here at america sparks if you're up for it, there's always room for you on every National Park adventure. God bless you.